Hey, everybody. Welcome to the very first episode of Ask the Giant Killer, brought to you by Mutant and starring the giant killer himself, Sean Clarita, who, as we speak, is just a few weeks away from his Arnold Classic open bodybuilding debut. Exciting, yeah. exciting, exciting. Yeah. Four weeks, four weeks, man. Four weeks. It's crazy. Yeah. So, guys, uh, this is going to be a Q&A show. If you have questions you'd like Sean to answer in the future in other episodes, please leave them in the comments below. Leave some comments anyway. We love your feedback. Uh, so full disclosure, I came up with all these questions this time, guys. But after this, it's all up to you. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, the first one came to me because you rarely post update pictures, Sean. Very rare. But yeah. you just posted a rare lat spread the other day. Goodness <laughs> gracious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that led me to come up with, I don't understand how more people don't talk about your back. I think it's one of the very best in the sport today. I do. What is a typical back work, back routine for you these days? And is it very different from how you built most of your back width and thickness over the years? No. So my training has been pretty much the same all few minutes since I started. I, I believe in heavy compound movements, barbell rows, T-bar rows, rack pulls, one-arm dumbbells. Um, and lately for this prep, um, we've been training back to like two and a half hours. Oof. Uh, I've always believed like with a big body part like legs or back, you really got to hit it from every possible angle. And uh, I know some people will call it overtraining. I personally believe that if I can recover and I feel good, uh, I'm going to keep banging the same way. So, yeah, we literally can train back up to two and a half hours. Um, I think the one session we did was eight exercises. Um, and they're all heavy exercises. I mean, they're, and there's there's no, you know, you know, sissy weight. Everything's pretty heavy. So we're, we're putting in that work, man. <laughs> yeah. can, can you recall the eight exercises that you did in that workout? So we always start with pull-ups, no matter what. Pull-ups, yeah. we do one-arm rows. Then we go to a uh, T-bar row. Then we go to a metals row. Uh, either a chest-supported row or like a, a standing B-bar row. We have an awesome, another chest-supported row that's more so overhand. Uh, we do obviously lower lats as well. So I do this one thing with the hammer strength um, row machine where I stand away from the pad and I kind of pull it down into my lat. Yeah. Uh, we also do like a reverse row on the machine. Uh, and then obviously some hypers as well at the end or rack pulls. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny because I was just doing a back article recently and I said a lot of guys, their entire back workout is a couple sets of lat pull downs, a couple sets of seated cable rows and they're good. They're, and they have no back development to speak of. And they wonder why. Yeah. Two and a half you'll, hours. You'll, you'll be you'll be funny. I actually don't really do lap lap pull downs anymore. Honestly, um, since I started working with John Meadows, what seven years ago, that was never in my program. John really didn't really ha have me do them. It was more so obviously pull ups to kind of get things warmed up, pullovers to stretch the muscle out. But he was a big believer in rows, man. You know, barber rows, t bar rows, dumbbell rows, just really rowing and yeah. getting out that elbow drive is back as far as possible. Yeah, I'm curious. So how many reps can you bang out on chin-ups? I'm assuming you're not adding weight at the chin-ups in the beginning. Uh, so I, you personally now, I like to do this, this um, what do you call this, this purported one. Yeah. So like they have the one that's like supports you this way. I can take the momentum out of it. Yeah. But if I were to just go straight on, I mean, I could probably do 25, 30 straight. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, right. Good answer. <laughs> uh, next one is from training with a guy who was 6'5 for several years. I realize that most machines are designed for people who fall into an average height range. If you're too much taller or shorter than average, they can be very difficult to use correctly. Do you run into that problem yourself? And if so, is that why you use mostly free weights? Uh, well, no. The reason why I use free weights personally is because it just feels better for me. Mm -hmm. And I can I can maneuver the, the bar or the dumbbell to kind of hit where I want to target. Um, but yeah, there are some, some machines that like, ah, this isn't going to work for me. I'm too, I'm too tall or too short. Mm -hmm. Like we have the steel row at my gym we just got, and it's a great piece, but I'm too short for it. Mm -hmm. So, but I can take that same, um, you know, steel row and do it on an incline bench. Whereas I'll take the bar and I'll just set up an incline bench and kind of put that same positioning and kind of row it and make it feel good. So yeah, there are going to be times where, um, you know, machines don't fit my height, uh, but you can always work around it or try other ideas. What, what is a seal row? Is that a type of exercise? So you lay flat on the pad and the yeah. bars in front of you, you come driving like this. Oh, so what is it? It's called a seal row. So your head is in the pad, the bar is below you and you're kind of pulling up this way. So it's like, like if you were doing it on a flat bench, maybe. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Cause I know, you know, most of us don't have, I remember Meadows used to do the videos from that place in Ohio. What's that? The elite? Elite, no. elite FTS. Yeah. They have like benches that are 
three feet off the ground so you could do stuff like that. Yeah. You know, most of us just have regular benches at our gyms. It's yeah. It's, you don't, you're not going to be able to get much of a stretch at all on that. So that's yeah, what seal row is. okay. So a seal row is basically a, you know, a row, a supported row, just on a flat bench. Exactly. That's exactly okay. what it is. But this, what we have, it's elevated off the ground. So it's really tall. So like, like it's really long. So hmm. when I'm short, it's like my feet kind of dangle in the air. Yeah. So I can't, I can't, I'm kind of everywhere. It doesn't, it doesn't feel good. So. I think, have you been to MI40 in Tampa, Ben, Ben Pekulski's yes. place? Is Absolutely. that what, is that what they have there? I they remember they had a bench that was way up high with, uh, you know, like slots in the bottom where you could put the bar and grab it. I wonder if that's what that was. Yeah. Same, probably same one. Yeah. Okay. Same one probably. And I'm assuming it's named after Navy SEALs or no? I don't want to say, I don't know. <laughs> Any Navy SEALs out there? Anybody who knows the answer, put it in the comments. I, I really want to know. Okay. Here's a, here's a, they're not all about bodybuilding guys. Not all of them. Some of them about sneakers. Here we go. I see from your Instagram, you collect Air Jordans. You got some yeah. nice ones. Just curious, will you train in these, wear them outside, or just keep them in boxes and never wear them? So my Jordans will never, ever be trained in. Um, I have training shoes. Uh, for the most part, I wear them occasionally if I go out to like a show or to dinner or out with the wife, whatever. But for the most part, a lot of them are collector collector's items. Mm -hmm. So I don't touch them at all. So I literally will buy them. Look at them, obviously, but put them away right away and don't even ever touch them again. Wow. Yeah, I think I, think, <laughs> I don't know who the top collector in the sport is. I know Phil Heath at one time told me he had, I don't know, like 200 pairs of Jordans. He had a room like a, he had a walk-in closet that was just for his Jordans or something ridiculous. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I just, I mean, right before, like for Olympia, like how I keep myself busy. I like a lot of guys and girls like, like food porn and, you know, buy food. I buy sneakers. So <laughs> Two months out from Olympia, I bought 13 pairs of sneakers. Oof. So, yeah, yeah that was kind of how I get my uh, fix. <laughs> what, what is the prize pair in your collection if you have one? Wow, that's a good question. Hmm. Hmm. There's so many, Ron, man. Wow. I have an original pair of 1992 brand new dead stock Air Jordan 7s. Hmm. Uh, they're called Jordan Cardinals. They've never been touched, never been worn. They're probably worth a lot of money right now. Um, and obviously, I've got some other pairs, like some Louis Vuitton stuff that I have in there. It's, it's really rare. Some off-whites uh, off that run anywhere from two to 5,000. Uh, so, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I had no idea that these, these limited edition sneakers were so expensive. And then, like, one day on the uh, – there was, like, a little news item. Like, the Yeezy sneakers came out, and they were, like, yeah. five – they would people get like five thousand bucks from like what are these yeah, yeah. Are they like solid gold or something? My goodness. Um, the, the harder they are, the more money you're gonna pay. <laughs> as far as basketball shoes in general, would you train in those or you think they're not a good shoe to train in? Uh if they're a flat sole, they're not they're not bad. Um like I, I remember when I first started, like first first started, I did train in a pair of Jordan's uh basketball shoes, but I didn't know any better back then. Um, but now I train everything flat, so so atomics, and uh, that's pretty much what I use. Okay, fair enough. Uh, next one is my shoulders are definitely the weakest point in my physique. That's not me, but I'm pretending this is me. <laughs> what you what do you suggest I try to change this sorry state of affairs? I do presses and lateral raises, both with dumbbells. Still, my shoulders are narrow and don't have much thickness at all to them. What would you do? Yeah, I was I would say continue to do what you're doing. Um, I prefer I like to do like two two exercises per head. So I do two front, two side, two, two rear. But I also believe when I have a weak body part, I do like to train it twice a week. Mm. Um, so like if I had a weak body part, like chest for me was my weakest area, I was training it twice a week. And even at one point in time, John had me training it three times a week. Wow. I'll just really bring it up. So if you have a, someone who has a weak body part, you know, if you should be training on Tuesday and then maybe training again on Friday. And when you do the, diff the training styles, make sure that they vary and they're different because, you know, you want to be able to hit it from every angle and have a different feel. So if I do a Tuesday session, I may use more compound movements, more barbells, dumbbells. And on that Friday, I may use more of a pump style where I use some cables, machines, things like that, just to stimulate different blood flow. Yeah. You know, I remember, John, one thing he wrote about was he was great at coming up with these programs for people. Uh, mm -hmm. They had like these awesome names, like, like the Predator and this. They all had cool yeah. names. And, but he, he made a point to say, it doesn't matter what your routine you're doing on paper, it's the execution of it. So if, if I'm working with somebody, I need to see how you're doing the movement because you're telling me you're yeah. doing laterals. I don't know what that lateral looks like. You might not even be doing a damn thing for your, you might be doing all traps or goodness. Right, you're right. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, check your right. form, guys. Check your form. Look at Sean's <laughs> videos and watch what Sean does. <laughs> uh, next one is, you made an interesting post in January titled Know Your Circle, which read, make sure everybody in your boat is rowing and not drilling holes while you're not look when you're not looking. Without naming, without naming names, have you had people in your inner circle at any time who you thought were on your side but really were not? No, I've never really had an issue. Obviously, you know, it's just, you know, people who thought your friends or thought, thought supported you really weren't supporting you. And I kind of cut those people out early in my career. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone knows me, I'm very private. I keep my circle very, very small. I probably have, you know, three or four really good friends and that's it. And it's my wife and I, that's really all we have. And Matt, obviously. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, I think it's important to have, um, you know, don't, you know, with this sport, it can be a lot, meaning you can have people wanting to, you know, ride your coattail or say you're, you're they're training for you or be your best friend or whatever for the wrong reasons. Right. Um, I'm aware of that I've been doing this almost 20 years. I know who's really been there before, before Sean, Mr. Olympia, you know what I mean? Versus the people who came afterwards. So, yeah, I mean, I've experienced it again with friends who, who, who quote unquote were friends. I thought that really didn't really support what I did or really support me or have my back. So. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, think, I think anybody who's had any type of success and has gone through any type of struggles, which is most human beings mm -hmm. has dealt with the, the phrase fair weather friend, the people mm -hmm. that are only friends with you when everything is going great and you can do things for them. But when you're having hard times, suddenly They're poof, gone. where'd they They're go? Gone. I don't hear from that guy or girl anymore. Interesting. Yeah. And that's I, I why, again, like, like I said, the friends that I had when I was, you know, 130 pounds, you know, are the same friends I have today, yeah. you know, because they didn't, they don't care about this right now. They care about the person before, before this. Right on. And another thing to be careful of everybody is the frenemy, which is someone <laughs> you think you're they're your friend, but they really talk about you behind your back and they really don't. Oh, like yeah. you. That's the friend. Oh, yeah. I like the, I like these crazy words. Last question I have for you is please tell me how you feel about the post workout nutrition window. Do you always have a shake right after training and what's in that? Yeah, I'm very big into that. I, I like to sip on a protein shake right after the gym. So anywhere from 60, 50 to 60 grams, um, depending on where I'm at in the season, it can be contest, pre-contest or off season. And if I'm off, off, off season, I do like to add carbs to that. So I can, uh, uh, what do you call it? HBCD, highly, highly chain, what is it, carb product or whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, I do utilize that. But obviously once I have that, I get home, I shower up. And I like to get a meal within 45 minutes of that as well. Okay, 45 minutes. So what are the uh, what are the products that go into the shake, the mutant products that go into that work post-workout shake? So right now we have the ISO Surge protein. Um, the two of my favorite flavors are the mint chocolate and the uh, peanut butter chocolate peanut butter chocolate chip. Yeah. So right now I'm just obviously I'm in prep. I still utilize the protein. I'm not adding adding any carb powder to that right now. Yeah. Did so do they have an unflavored uh, carb powder? No, not yet. Yeah, because I find a lot of these companies make like a whey protein and then they make like a, a, a cyclic dextrin powder. Yes. But you got to be careful with the flavors, guys. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to mix like a fruity flavor and chocolate or something. It's your stomach's going to be doing backflips. <laughs> I'm, I'm very big into unflavored things like that. So I can mix whatever I want. Yeah, cool things. Yeah. Now, so 45 minutes later, solid meal. What's a typical post-workout meal for you? Uh, are either you know either beef or beef or bison with either white rice or pasta. Can't go wrong with that, guys. Pretty yes. simple. Something yeah. wholesome, digest well for me. I feel like I get you know. Obviously, I had a really good session. I'm feeling like you know really depleted. I want to kind of fuel the glycogen back up. So those, those work best for me. Right on. Um, last question. Baby update. How's your daughter doing? Gosh, she's great. Where is she? She's here. <laughs> I think she's sleeping. Okay. She turned one month today. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. We're still fighting the whole, you know, baby up all night, which is very real. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're not we're not getting much sleep. Um, but honestly, it hasn't affected my prep, hmm. you know, because, you know, I my, my, my wife takes care of her for the most part during the nights. Uh, once in a blue moon, if I'm going to the bathroom, I may get up and check in on her. I'm um, still doing my cardio first thing in the morning and she sleeps during the day. So when she's sleeping, I'm sleeping as well. So it works out. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming after the Arnold, she's going to, your wife's going to make you get up and get her, get her, yeah. get, go get the baby. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take, I'm gonna take a, I'm going to take a nice little break, you know, from the gym and training and everything and just focus on the family, focus on eating and just kind of just getting back to, you know, real life. Cool, man. Yeah. So uh, your channel is called Sean Clarita, your YouTube channel, correct? Yes, sir. So guys, check that out. Really hardcore training footage. Unfortunately, he doesn't take a shirt off in the gym. 
He's all covered up, but you can see the intensity. You can see the form. <laughs> you can see everything you need to see except for the physique. You're going to have to wait until the Arnold Classic to see the full full physique on stage in front of you. Man, I'm excited, man. We still have, what, six? Was it five weeks now? Five and a half weeks? Four weeks tomorrow. Oh, is it four weeks? Oh, wow, time's flying. Wow. Flying, man. Flying, Ooh. yeah. Four weeks. We're in February already. Yeah, you're right. We are. We're recording this on Groundhog Day, and Bad news, guys. Apparently, winter's not over yet. The groundhog, mm. the groundhog, what? Saw a shadow or didn't see a shadow or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Stupid. I just know it snowed yesterday. So. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, well, you got some sh- yeah. snow down in Jersey. Yeah, we're we're yeah. like we're like snowless up here. It's crazy. I yeah. love you. Yeah, I'll say. So uh, that's it. Thank you so much, Sean. Uh, that has been episode one of Ask the Giant Killer, presented by Mutant. And like I said, guys. Under this, in the comments, leave questions for the next episode. We'd love to get some actual questions from you guys. Yeah. Uh, don't make them all about the Arnold Classic because that might be over by the next time we do this. So, <laughs> training, nutrition, supplementation, motivation, anything. Sean's been in the game a very long time, and he's here to help. So yep. thank you, Sean. Thank uh, you, guys. We'll look forward to it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching this. Please subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Share the video. Comment. Turn on notifications. Do all the good stuff. We appreciate it. We'll see you right here next time. Thanks for watching. Hey, did you like that video? Smash that like button, subscribe to MD, and please comment down below. Thanks for watching.